check out my previous video right here on the right hand top corner also in the description below so anyways this was the flight from sfo as in san francisco to new delhi india i flew over the north pole i got to witness some gorgeous sunset and it was extremely beautiful like it's been so long since i actually got to witness something so beautiful like orange sky for the wind so anyways while i landed in delhi the visibility itself was super low i couldn't block the um the landing and everything because it was like smog all over as well as you know i couldn't like really see anything so here's a picture of um you know what how i feel so anyways uh i landed in delhi and the moment i landed the only thing that they kept asking like literally everyone was the exemption form the form that starts with the er it has to get approved also you need to keep your physical boarding pass in your hand don't like throw it away because sometimes people throw it away after the flight just don't do that over here um the other cool thing that i found really really nice was that the delhi airport had the estimate of the how, how long would immigration take which i thought was super super cool there are about like three four checks before you actually get to immigration where they do ask for your same exemption form which needs to be approved um because that's how you know that you won't get quarantined at home or in a hotel or wherever you plan to visit so you need to have all that documents in place of course with your passport and other stuff so that's super important so you need to have that the other forms are not so important like the self-exemption form or the covid test that you might have but then in case they do ask do have that in place as well but the only thing that they are mostly concerned about is the form that starts with the er which is the exemption form cool awesome because a lot of people ask me about it so i just want to clarify that another thing that i really found super cool was all these mudras which were at the delhi airport it was all over the place and it was really really awesome like it was super creative so anyways i had to go take my package after the immigration was done which was super quick i was it took like hardly five minutes they did a temperature check which was pretty nice compared to the other immigration um you know which they don't apparently so anyways so I had to stroll around duty free and I got a literal heart attack looking at the prices. I'm like 1000 rupees for like top run chocolate. No, thank you. But then that's the only way to actually get through the baggage corner. I don't know whether they kept it as a bait for people to buy. But anyways, it was there. I've been saying anyways a lot, but here it is. So another thing that I found super confusing while at the baggage carousel was the fact that the bags were like one in the carousel itself like the conveyor belt also on the side um but do check both the places uh for your bags some of the bags are like from previous flights some of the bags are from the same flight so just check them out and make sure that your bags aren't getting messed and stuff so another thing that was uh, super cool was that it, this was my first time in New Delhi and I loved it. I love the airport. Uh, it isn't unlike any other American airports that have been, which are like super dull, but it was really, really gorgeous. Like it's amazing, including the duty free, including the carousel, like the whole experience was like super great. Um, I did have to take another flight to Chennai. Um, so there was a domestic transfer. So again, I had to do the same procedure where it was like, give out the exemption form so on the right over here is basically people who haven't done the forms properly so they need to be interrogated they need to do some more stuff so it's a huge added headache so just ensure you have your exemption form approved and i'm, I'm pretty sure you're gonna have a very smooth sailing uh, experience for sure so I had to get down to the domestic side, which was another, um, which was totally on the other side. So there was an elevator from the departures to the domestic departures. Um, so I got there and then this was another cool thing. So my flight was to uh, in Air India. It was from Delhi to Chennai. My flight was at 10 a.m. and I landed at 12. So it was pretty much like a nine hour um like nine hour halt and i like got like so bored i kid you not it was like the most boring shit ever uh but uh, you know it, it is what it is the other thing is that if you do have a connecting flight from delhi to somewhere some other place in india uh make sure that your bags are weighed less than 23 i know united was a little loosey loose over there uh, with your carry-ons and stuff like that but if you have a connecting flight make sure you your bags and everything are like the correct weight because 
uh, even if it's slightly overweight, they do charge. So don't think like you got rid of it, um, you know, but just because United didn't check, make sure that the connecting flight, whoever that is, whether it's Indigo, or Air India, or whichever flight carrier, they are pretty strict about it. So do check it out. Um, the other thing to do when you are you when you have like a nine hour halt is just roam around the whole airport like especially the duty free section and a lot of shops in Delhi and just be like baffled at the price which is what I did uh, there were a lot of um, you know shops that were open super expensive obviously and there was also a food uh, corners street corners sort of a shop that was there it was like super creative everyone who was bored like just uh visited it and ate i guess it was like 300 rupees starting price so i was like nah i'm not gonna do it and i kept checking every five minutes for the gate information and finally around seven uh it the boarding information like the gate information was available and i'm like phew finally i can get to the gate and um yeah and before i got to the gate i just wanted to serve some more bit because you know <laughs> how else are you gonna pass time it was really boring you guys if you in like if there is a way to avoid nine hours of you know uh halt at delhi do for sure the other thing is that i couldn't actually go outside because um one it was like late in the early morning like around midnight ish to early morning so pretty much if i go out there's like literally for sure nothing is going to be open so i didn't like even plan on going out had it been some other time i would have actually visited delhi and seen some of the cool stuff over there um another thing i kid you not everything's expensive at the airport this one bag was like 750 and i did the asian thing of proceeding to put it away and just like walk away from the shop and get to the gate so when i got to the gate there are a lot of cool sculptures a lot of cool statues over there and it felt i mean this is a domestic airport but it felt very international um so you can pretty much expect the same thing uh it's the terminal three and there was a starbucks there was a lot of cool stuff over there obviously pretty expensive and that's about it the other cool thing as i mentioned in the previous video is the water drinking ritual which i do all the time um there's the bubbler here but unlike in the us where you have a button on the side this is a, a foot pedal which i found it more hygienic and it's actually pretty cool i actually got to fill my bottle as well and yeah it was really nice uh it's also free and the water tasted really nice like uh compared to us um it was more sweeter in case you're noticing if you are particular about the difference uh the other thing about uh, the visibility that i did mention earlier was the fact that i couldn't see anything and it was like w i couldn't like see anything outside and i thought like as the day uh goes by it gets better and better but it didn't in the right words it's basically like a thick dense fog just for the imaginative purposes and it's uh super super thick that the visibility itself is like really low you can't really see much but it's basically like a very thick dense fog so anyways instead of complaining about how bad the visibility is i actually got to roam around the airport because that's what's the next best thing to do i you know just to surf as well as you know more shots for the vlog so another cool sculpture right in the middle of the gate is this yoga posture um sculpture it goes all the way around the spiral just around the different faces so i thought that was really cool there were a lot of paintings um in igt3 a lot of um, sculptures like this one a couple more like the elephant that we um, saw earlier in the video so really really nice so anyways i walked back and forth because that's really what i do generally i like walking on these um these escalators it's not escalators but this walking thing that actually moves and i actually like to go faster um so anyways it was time for me to board finally another thing is that air india does provide all this protective um you know protective gear which is your shield a mask which is not the greatest quality but it is what it is you also get a hand sanitizer um so that's what it is so for the people in the middle seat, however, they get a hazmat suit, the one uh, the, the gentleman right there who's wearing. So it's like a lab coat um, and whoever is 
uh, on the middle uh, gets to wear it um, and so that you don't like rub each other off and the flight was full it wasn't like an empty flight um, so yeah I didn't have a seat designed for me for the longest time so I was hoping I would get a middle seat just because I would get a hazmat suit for free but unfortunately or fortunately in this case my constant remain a constant and I got a window seat um, not that great in my experience because one um, I couldn't like really see because of the low visibility and I didn't mind um, you know actually sitting in the aisle or the middle this time just mainly because of the free hazmat suit I know it's like you know not the best in terms of swag or anything but it's something that um, you know it's free and I wanted it I know it's super lame but anyways uh, the flight itself was like completely booked uh, it was like totally totally booked uh, there was not any spaces a lot of people were like separated there were a lot of people like you know the the seating arrangement was horrible and then they didn't do the right thing by reshuffling it they like just everyone sit wherever you are assigned so there was a lot of things that was going on debates going on and another thing the other thing that i did notice was that united had leather seats this one was cloth um like it was completely cloth i don't remember whether it's because of covid or it's just generally air india with the indian colors but it is what it is. There's no TV. My flight was like for two and a half hours, but whatever. It wasn't that boring, I guess. Having survived nine hours of pure boredom, I, I'm sure I can survive two and a half hours of just like sitting there. And I do the same ritual as always, just going by the safety manual just to calm down and, you know, just tell my anxious self like, hey, it's all that not bad. So yeah, so window seat as well. This time... Um, I got to see a proper view and like United where it was kind of in the middle it was kind of awkward so uh, that was it the other thing was that Air India did provide meals and was all vegetarian in case you guys are wondering and it was really nice it was re pleasantly surprising uh, the, they offered the meal right about half an hour after the takeoff so it was really nice they got I got a taste an Indian sweet the other thing that I have a major problem with was the ketchup sachet I couldn't open it I bit it and I actually spilled it over the other passenger sitting next to me so I don't know what's up with this Indian sachets that I hardly can't open it but anyways Apart from the rough landing, I finally landed in Chennai and I was super pleased.